Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be my favorite TV shows and movies of 2020. So I actually really didn't watch that many new TV shows or movies in 2020, especially movies. I barely watched any. I watched a total of 11 new TV shows that I had not watched before and seven new movies. Everything else that I watched throughout the year was rewatches. I tend to do that a lot. I really love rewatching my favorite TV shows and my favorite movies. So I barely watch anything new. That's definitely something I need to improve in 2021 is to watch new things. I will actually link my playlist for all of my TV show and movie wrap-ups if you want to know more about what I watched throughout the year. So I'm just going to jump straight in and talk about my favorite TV shows of 2020. I have six new favorite TV shows that I'm going to go through from number six to number one and then I will just mention some returning favorites. So either I've mentioned them before or they had like a new season that I like quickly want to mention. I will go through those after. So coming in at number six is The Last SARS which is on Netflix. It is basically about the fall of the Romanov dynasty and it's kind of done in a documentary style but also acted out so it's kind of like a drama. I really enjoyed the style of it. I think it was very interesting to watch and it gave you both kind of a dramatized version of it but also there was facts and actual details given by historians and stuff. I thought the acting was pretty good and I did enjoy the way that the story was told. I wish more documentaries were told like this, like kind of in drama form but also documentary because I really enjoyed it. If you have any recommendations for like historical events or historical people that have documentaries like this, please leave them down below because I really enjoyed this one and it definitely stood out to me. It's about six episodes long, but they definitely fit in everything. It makes you realize how sad their story is and how everything just happened and the way like one event was like the domino effect for everything. It's just, it's really sad. It's honestly very sad to know that, you know, that happened in real life. It's, it's pretty awful. But I thought the series was really well done and I very much enjoyed it. So I guess coming in at number five is Taskmaster. I feel weird including like my favorite British game show variety shows. I never know what to call them. I feel weird including them in these type of videos because it's not a scripted show. It's like, it's very much comedians who compete to win these ridiculous prizes and it's all in front of them like embarrassing themselves and stuff. It's really fun and it made me laugh. I binged pretty much all of the seasons in March. I haven't watched the latest season but I loved pretty much all of the past seasons. I watched all of the episodes actually on YouTube. They do have their own YouTube channel, so you can actually binge a lot of their seasons on there. I love watching a lot of like European comedians just be ridiculous on television, and I always think they're so funny. So I love the show, and it was really fun and I had a great time watching it. Coming in at number three is Kim's Convenience. This is a Canadian TV show, it's on CBC. I watched the first three seasons on Netflix and then I watched season four on CBC. This is a really, really funny and cute show. It is about a Korean Canadian family who run a convenience store and all of the adventures that they have with that. It is such a feel-good, heartwarming show. This show is really funny. I love the characters. It really took me by surprise. I didn't really think I'd like it, but I gave it a shot and I really, really enjoyed it. And I binged all of the seasons that are currently out and I can't wait for more. Did I say Kim's Convenience was number four? Or number three? Because it's number four. Now coming in at number three is Virgin River season one and the first half of season two. I'm not done season two yet, so I can't fully talk about it. But Virgin River, I binged in early quarantine and I really loved it. This follows a nurse who decides to move to the small town of Virgin River to kind of get away from her life and her troubles essentially. And she starts up as the nurse in this new town and everybody's curious about her. She's meeting all these new people and she's immediately intrigued by Jack who is the owner of the bar in the town. It's definitely a very cozy, heartfelt, 
warm show. Like, it's, it's a show that just makes me feel like I'm having a hug, you know? I love the characters. I love the acting. There's a couple of episodes that do make me cry. Like, I do feel emotional while watching it. It's weird because it's not a super dramatic or heavy show. I feel like it just kind of tricks you into, like, feeling these emotions. And they kind of come out of nowhere. But it's like, it has a slow build. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like Virgin River is that show that just you can't help but love because it's so sweet and meaningful, if that makes sense. I really loved it. I can't wait to finish season two, and it was renewed for a third season, so I'm very excited about that. Coming in at number two is Money Heist, or La Casa de Papel. This show, guys, this show... Again, I binged in early quarantine, and it was the best thing I had, like, ever watched. This follows a bunch of criminals who team up to have the biggest robbery in Spain history and they try to rob the Royal Mint of Spain. They have like this whole elaborate plan and it is so interesting, so dramatic. It's so fun too, but it's so like you, you can't help but be on the edge of your seat every flippin' episode. I felt so stressed while I watched the show. I was having, like, headaches every night before I went to bed because I was so stressed. Like, this show, just, it really put me on the edge of my seat every time. If I'm at a different angle, it's because I had to change my battery. I'm sorry. I feel like it is hard to get into the show a little bit. Like, the first few episodes are a little rough, but after that, once you're in it, you literally can't stop. Like, I, I just could not stop watching and I had to finish it. I also thought it was really translated well because at first I barely noticed that it was translated or like dubbed or whatever. I thought the whole show was done in English and then I kind of realized like after the intro I was like why is the intro in a different language and then I was like oh shit this is a Spanish show and I, I did not register that because I thought that the dubbing and everything was really well done. I think it's a fantastic show and I highly recommend it. All of the characters kind of grow on you. They're all criminals, but you obviously want them to succeed and rob the bank and get away with it. And you want them to succeed in all of it. They've done such a great job with the show and I cannot wait for the final season. Oh, and if you didn't know, Virgin River and Money Heist are both on Netflix. And my favorite show of 2020 is obviously Sons of Anarchy. So I finally watched Sons of Anarchy in 2020 and I fell completely in love with it. I had watched Mayans before and I really loved Mayans and I knew I had to watch Sons of Anarchy at some point. All of the seasons are currently on Netflix, so that is where I watched it. This show reminds me why I love TV so much, and it reminds me of how much I love, you know, like classic TV that came out every week and you had only one episode. This is the type of show that reminds me why I love TV so much and like the way TV used to be, if that makes sense. I knew going into the show how it ended, so that was not a surprise to me, and it was kind of funny because I could pick up on all the references throughout the whole series. I was like, that is a reference for this, that is a reference for this, so I knew how it ended. I was still upset, obviously. I was still heartbroken because that is very shocking. I feel like it shows you how good the writers are because they put in those hints from, like, season one. You realize how much detail they put in it. The acting in the show is phenomenal. The writing in the show is phenomenal. I didn't even explain the show, but if you haven't heard of Sons of Anarchy and you don't know what it is, it's basically about a motorcycle club, biker gang, and our main character Jax dealing with being a father and an outlaw and being the prince of the club. It's honestly just one of the best shows I have ever watched. I think it's genuinely one of the best shows ever written, ever acted. Like, it is it is a phenomenal TV show, and I know I have weird tastes when it comes to TV shows, and I'm very easily pleased with everything, but when I say that this show is phenomenal, it really is. I loved all of the characters, and I loved Jax. I mean, yes, there were times I hated him and I was mad at him, but at the end of the day, I loved him, and he always just tried to see the best in people, and it backfired so many times on him. But I also feel like he brought a lot of shit onto himself, so I am forever bitter about how <sighs> certain characters were treated in the end. Regardless of all of that, 
I loved the show and I definitely want to rewatch it in the future. Now for returning favorites, I'm just going to quickly mention them because I have talked about them before in the past. So we have Schitt's Creek season six. It was the final season. Such a beautiful, beautiful season. I absolutely loved it. The perfect ending to a perfect show. Brooklyn Nine-Nine season seven. Brooklyn Nine-Nine is obviously my favorite TV show of all time. I really love it. Season seven was fantastic. I do feel like it is missing Gina a little bit. I feel like they're missing that extra little bit of weird comedy. I really do miss Gina, but I still love the show so much and I cannot wait for more episodes. Killing Eve season three was really interesting. It was kind of weird, but also I liked it, but also where is it going to go now? Like I feel like the cat and mouse game between Eve and Villanelle is kind of over, so what is going to happen now? I'm hesitant for the next season, but I do think season three was really fun and really interesting and I love when Villanelle is just being her bad self and killing people. I love it. And of course, Lucifer season five, part one. So happy we got some episodes in 2020. I really love this show and I'm very happy with how things are happening between some characters. There were a few twists that I did see coming, but overall it was a really good start to season five and I can't wait for the rest, and I can't wait for season six. So yeah, those were pretty much all of my favorite TV shows of 2020. Now I'm going to talk about my favorite movies of 2020. As I said, I've only really watched seven new movies, and I only have one favorite. My favorite movie of 2020 is definitely Gabriel's Inferno, part one, two, and three. I consider them all just one big, long, five-hour movie, so I'm just going to say Gabriel's Inferno. I have made countless videos about the adaptation of Gabriel's Inferno, so I will link them all down below. If you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts surrounding the adaptations, I highly recommend watching those videos. This basically just follows a professor and a student who fall in love, but who also have a kind of mysterious, unexpected past together. I love the book by Sylvain Renard. I have read it countless times. I really love the series and I was very excited for the adaptation and it was amazing. I really, really loved it. I love the actors. I mean, Passion Flicks always does really accurate adaptations, so I was not concerned about them leaving things out. So they pretty much included everything. I mean, that's why it's, it was split into three parts and that's why it's like over five hours long because they literally included everything and it was so beautiful to see the book come to life and as I said I loved the actors they had a lot of chemistry and that is really what sold the movie. I really have such a, a huge love for the book because it is about forgiveness and about true love and, and love overcoming everything and I feel like they did a really good job with that in the movie. I just loved the movies. I thought they were fantastic and I'm very excited for them to adapt Gabriel's Rapture. So those were all my favorite TV shows and movies of 2020. Let me know what your guys' favorites were and if you have any recommendations for me please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!